I, uh, I made the video yesterday and I talked about, uh, I brought a verse out of John 14, I believe it's 12, verses 12 and 13. John 14, 12 to 13. And I used the, um, I didn't have my regular Bible. I have, this is a, just a paperback New Testament, ESV. Um, I buy a case of these probably once a year, every year and a half, and leave them at work, give them away for free. You know, they're very cheap. You can buy them just, they're, they're, you can buy Bibles in bulk. But, uh, and people take them. Maybe something good becomes of it. Um, but I used the Gideon Bible yesterday, which is a little tougher to understand. Okay, I gotta explain something here. Where did it go? Uh, John 14. Okay, this was the verse. John 14, 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me, this is Jesus talking, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. Whoever believes in Jesus will do the works that Jesus does. And greater works than these will he do. So not only will you do the works of Jesus, you'll do more. Because I am going to the Father. All right? He's already been crucified, resurrected. He comes back. And um, I think, let's see. I might have to do order out of place, whatever. But anyway, he's come back. and he, I'm sorry. He's going to the Father. When he goes to the Father, that's when he breaks into the book of Acts. The Spirit comes down, pours the Spirit out upon all of His people. Okay, but that doesn't happen until Jesus, the, until the event happens, and He and He and He uh, goes back to the Father. I might have butchered that, but you get the idea. He says, "When I go to the Father, that was that was important because once He does that, the Spirit comes down." We talk about in John 14, 15, 16, how the Helper, the Spirit of Truth, the God will provide you with the the Helper, the Holy Spirit, this and that. That's what happens then. Had not happened prior. Okay. Remember, this is John 14, 15, 16. What am I, I'm talking about this all the time. Okay. So, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. Um, now, people hear that. If you're a new believer, you haven't had to necessarily deal with this yet. Maybe you haven't read it or you're, nah, you don't understand that or whatever. If you've been around the faith a long time, you've already had to deal with this in some way. You could either ignore it, not read that page or have someone interpret it in a way where it'll fit you, okay? Most people read that and think, well, I'm a Christian, but I'm not doing what Jesus does. I can't heal and cripple and make guys see and all this kind of stuff. But I'm assuming that's what he was talking about. All the stuff that he did, the supernatural stuff, I assume that's what he's talking about. He's not talking about just washing someone's feet or something like that. I mean, he's talking about the whole package. But most people look at that and say, well, I, I, I'm a Christian. I'm not doing that. But what's going on there? Or my pastor doesn't do that. I've never met a Christian that does that. I do not know a disciple, a true disciple. I do not know any. I mean, wouldn't, we, wouldn't he be on, on uh, Oprah if we had someone like that? Um, do you think that'd be a big deal? So we got that as Westerners. I mean, we, can't, we, we have a problem with this. So I just take it literal because it fits with the rest of the book, in my opinion. Uh, but I know most people are going to say, oh, that's that, we, we, we can't be Jesus. I mean, we're saved sinners. We can't. It's not us. But you'll find in most churches, which is extremely popular, and they, they, they do it similarly. They don't all do it the same. But they'll take that verse, and it's a, it's a form of what they call dispensations or dispensationalism. I call it divide and conquer. Um, they'll say, "Well, you know, Jesus was talking to the disciples. This was the this is the time this the, when he makes the statement. This is the time or the era of the gospel, the gospel era. We're not in the gospel era. We're under the era of grace. And they'll have a chart. It has all these really cool looking." You know, this time and this time, from this point forward, and all you know. And there's always a point where he, uh, when he's crucified, all this was this, and all this was that. <clears throat> and what they can do is they can divide all this up 
TV, well, this is really the only portion here that, that concerns you, that, that you can be held accountable for. The Jehovah's Witnesses have a really trick sh chart. I mean, they fold this thing out, and it's, it's, it's probably the most complex one. But all these, a lot of churches have this, something similar. And what they do is they, they can show you that, you know, all, that what Jesus said there was for that time to those people. You know, it's context and time, this kind of thing. It's not for you. Because we're not doing that. But we're under we're under grace, and um, you know it's not an earned salvation, and we're all saved, all this all this kind of stuff. And that works for most people. That'll satisfy them. All right. But when you do that, to understand that John fourteen twelve and thirteen now does not apply to you. Okay, if you're going this under grace thing, that doesn't apply to you. But neither does anything else in that book. You can take all those letters in red later. It doesn't, doesn't apply to you anymore. Because you just found a system, a mechanism, where we can explain that away. I know, no, I'll be alone with this. No one will agree with this. But you just found a way where you can take. Because. I mean, there's a whole lot in John 14, 15, 16. And he was talking to his disciples. And he said, if you love me, if you follow my teachings, if you're, you know, I talk about walking the teachings of Jesus, if you obey my commands, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That doesn't apply to you. Oh, no, that applies to me. Oh, that part applies to you. Okay, but the other part doesn't. See, you see how this gets kind of sideways. It's, it's, you, you now have the liberty to pick and choose, and that's very dangerous. Um, now, you might here's a, a question you must ask. Well, gee, seller, if, uh, if 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 that's the case, then why aren't you doing all the things that Jesus does and more? It's a very good question. Well, if from what little I've spoke about in this Bible, you should be able to to come to the conclusion. That I'm not, if I'm not doing the things that Jesus is doing, there's, there's several things you can point to. Jesus says, if you love me, I will do this. Maybe I don't love him. Um, and there's, there's a verse in there that talks about his teachings. I talk about staying in, or, uh, walking in the teachings of Jesus. I must not be doing that. You will obey my commands. I must not be doing that. And I, the Father, I'll go to the Father on your behalf, and he will fill you with the Holy Spirit. Well, you must not have done that. Because if I'm not doing the others, I'm not getting the Holy Spirit. If I'm not walking in the teachings of Jesus, if I do not love him, if I'm not following the commands, I'm not going to get the Holy Spirit. It's pretty simple. I don't, you know, I don't need a degree to figure this part out. But that would be your conclusion. That, Or oh, here's another one. This is very important. We haven't talked about repentance. We haven't gone around repentance yet. I could have a big old chunk of sin in my life that I have not dealt with you uh, this needs to be repented of you need to go and, and deal with this you can't just hide and pretend it's not there that's sin that we have to deal with if I've got any of these things I'm not going to be doing the things that Jesus does plain and simple you say, well, gee seller you got work to do yeah you pretty much assume wouldn't you I have a list of things that have to be accomplished we, I've talked all the time about conditions this book is so full of conditions it rock your brain but it's, it's, it's a simple concept. But how are you going to go to some old, old grandma that's been in a church for 25, 30 years, and she says, well, I can't do any of this, or this and that. We say, well, grandma, maybe, you, oh, here's the other one. I don't know if I said this. Belief. Maybe I, maybe I have all the others, but I really don't believe this is going to happen. I don't have that mustard seed. Guess what? It ain't going to happen. I ain't going to be doing what Jesus does. But how are you going to go tell some grandma that's been in your church forever that, well, you just don't believe? Or, oh, Grandma, you got some sin you need to deal with. Or, oh, Grandma, don't you love Jesus? You obeying the commands? Well, no, I'm under this umbrella of grace. And you'll stay under that umbrella. <clears throat> Your prayers be bouncing off the inside of that thing. You can't have it both ways. You can't have, well, I like these verses. These fit me. These ones don't. Well, gee, so how do we explain this doing what Jesus does? I just did. 
see if, if things aren't if I'm not lining up with this it's not because it needs to be adjusted or, or tweaked I, I need to be the adjustment and the tweaking see but this is this is when you talk I point to those videos of great falling away or all the issues of the church that's the problem with the church is they've taken so much of this Bible and explained it away taken it out of your reach they're denying the uh, they're basically denying Jesus is what it is well Jesus says that but I don't believe it or I'm not gonna do it, so I'm denying him that's really bad okay but this guy up the pulpit he's a sharp dude he's got a full house here he must know what he's talking about he's under that same umbrella Dispensations, dispensationalism, there's other forms of it, this and that. Some people use that word differently, but there's a lot of passages in this book that just aren't comfortable. Very convicting. Wait, I'm not doing that. How come I'm not getting that? I'm not, you know. Well, if you're doing anything, assume that what Jesus is doing here, he's filled with the Holy Spirit. He's filled with the Spirit of God. He says in that same paragraph, it's not me that does the works, it's the Father working through me. Same thing we're trying to create here. We want the Father working through us, through His Holy Spirit. That's all I've been talking about. Okay? But we need to make ourselves a vessel worthy to carry such a responsibility. Okay? And to do that, you know, if you had a preacher that was hanging out at the topless bar every night, what, what is this? You can't, you know, that doesn't fit. That doesn't, you know, that's an extreme example, but you get the idea. I have to be walking worthy of such a responsibility. Okay, and if things aren't lining up and happening for me like the Bible says, I must be doing something wrong. And it's really hard to sell a message like that to a group of people that are paying you every month and want to feel good. I, I say, I'll be totally alone. I don't agree with you on this. But, it, like, you know, let me show you. I mean, it's not, I'm not making it up. This is, you know, John 14. Right there. Truly, truly. John 14, 12, 13, right there. Um, wait, let's see. I hit it right there. I don't know if it's that backwards or not. But anyhow, it's, uh, it's, uh, that's a verse you're going to have to deal with. You're going to have to continue with that. You might find a system out there, there's, it's very easy to find, that will explain that away, oh, and make it more palatable for you. Palpable. Um, but is that really word, you, is that really what God wants you to do? Some guys can tell you, well, no, here's, you know, you know that's this, that, uh. I mean, if you settle for that, I mean, do you really want that? I mean, because the, the, here's the thing. John 14, 15, 16, to me, is very powerful. You do this, command, promise, faith, to the woman. Jesus says, if you do this, I will do this. And you really want this, because it's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's the whole, it's the indwelling of God, the indwelling of the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of truth. What more could you want? See? What more could you, could, what, could you strive, want to strive for anything greater? See, to me, it's it's just an important chunk of scripture that I think makes the, all the rest of it, you know, the 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 all the rest of it's so powerful. But when you first get into the Bible and you start getting it, start reading it, things are being revealed to you, or people teach you something. It looks so big. But the longer you stay with this, and the more you learn, the more things you pick up, more things to reveal for you, reveal to you, the book becomes very small. You get to a point where you can write it down on a page of what actually what, what, what you must actually do. It really becomes small and smaller and smaller and smaller, more simplified. Not easier, but you, you just it's just becomes smaller. Hopefully that makes sense. You can't explain it away, or I, I, if I seem like I'm sarcastic about that, I don't mean to be, but I just don't think it's right. But if you take that and you some say, oh no, that's not the way all the you know the churches we do it this way, and that's not that's not it. We're not of that time. We're of this time over here. We're just waiting for this Jesus to return. It's all going to be, you know, honey, milk, and roses, and all that. But then you have to you can just basically take the rest of what he said, and none of it applies to you. You can't pick and choose. You can't cherry pick. Anyhow, love you. God bless. That was John 14 verses 12 and 13.